I found a way to beat Pokemon Yellow with only a Caterpie. This is a bad idea, but here we go. This will be a solo run, and for these I use a couple of simple rules. I can only use my starter in battle, so today, Caterpie. I can't use any items in battle. Caterpie will get one exception as a handicap, and I can't use any glitches or cheats. I replaced Pikachu with Caterpie, and I created a sprite so it can be my follower. This is based on the Gen 2 menu icon for bug types. Caterpie is going to have an uphill battle for the entire game. Even this first lab battle with the rival is incredibly difficult with his EV being much stronger than Caterpie. This isn't the worst thing in the world. I would have liked to have the level up from beating him here, but Caterpie losing this fight means that the rival will have Vaporeon, which is actually probably the best case scenario for it today. Obviously Flareon would be the hardest matchup for it, but Vaporeon should make this a little bit easier. I'm not going to bother to fight him again then on Route 22, but now I have to find a way to start getting some levels. Obviously Caterpie is going to need a very high level to beat the game, and even to beat Brock, it's going to need a lot of help. I start in the forest to find a few easy Pokemon to knock out. A level 5 Caterpie does not have a lot of power, so it needs a little bit of a run up just to be able to beat the first few trainers. Luckily other underleveled Caterpies and a few Metapods can make for some easy training here. Once I get to Pewter, I can start Blackout training. Here I intentionally fight the Light Years trainer in Brock's gym. This guy will be way too strong for Caterpie to beat anyway at this level, but if I intentionally black out here, I can keep the experience from beating his Diglett and just keep doing that over and over again until I get to a decent level. I start to realize at level 15 that it's going to start taking too long though for his Sanchu to knock me out. At this point, Caterpie's doing decent enough damage that it can actually train much quicker in the forest, which is the best place in the early game to get good experience with wild Pokemon. So with that, I'm going to grind a lot of wild Pokemon to get the experience needed to beat Brock. I did make one big change that's going to really help Caterpie get past this first gym challenge. I updated Struggle to work as it did in Gen 2. That means that Struggle is now typeless. This is really going to help for Brock because his rock Pokemon obviously resist normal type moves like Tackle, so Caterpie is going to have a much better time just struggling here. On top of now being typeless, Struggle also will only deal one quarter recoil instead of half of the damage that it deals. This updated Struggle is going to be a huge benefit for Caterpie and also make it possible to even get through the game. Brock is still rock hard though and requires at least level 18, maybe level 20 to be a guaranteed win, but to limit the training it's better to try earlier. Levels in the early game come really slowly. While training I also catch a Pidgey and name it Cat, thank you so much Cat for being subscribed, you rock. After 27 minutes it's finally time to face Brock. Our Caterpie Bugsy is level 18 and we go in with Struggle. This does decent damage against Geodude but Onyx has really good defense. The other scary thing for Onyx is that it has Bide. If I hit into a Bide with Struggle, it could deal a massive damage back to me, and I have no choice of what I can use once I'm struggling. Caterpie gets very lucky on the first try, and it doesn't use Bide early. It gets close, but we take the win. And with that first gym defeated, we still have a long way to go to get Caterpie to the finish line. What is good is that Caterpie is overleveled, meaning its speed is pretty good, and its defense is not too bad. The new attack boost from Brock's badge really is going to help as well. Heading out to Route 3 and Mount Moon, I'm going to fight as many extra trainers as possible. I need to prepare for the big battles coming up, and Caterpie's not suited for a lot of the matchups that are to come. It's really held back by its learn set. It starts with Tackle and String Shot, and doesn't learn any moves by level up. This means Struggle is going to be necessary, it's higher base power at 50, then Tackle's 35, and it has 100% accuracy. In the early generations, Tackle only had 95% accuracy, which is really annoying. But once I'm struggling, I can even beat Hikers like the one in Mount Moon. The problem is that this requires using up all of the String Shot PP, which takes time and I have to find a weak Pokemon like a Metapod to use for it. We can make our way through Mount Moon and run into the first unexpected wall of the run, Jesse and James. I never would have expected this and in my first run it wasn't an issue, so I guess I just got lucky. I did a first run to test and make sure that everything was working, but I didn't think that Team Rocket would be the first big problem. That's because poison moves are super effective against bugs, plus Wrap from Ekans is annoying since we have to hit it so many times to KO, it can really draw out the fight. Growl from Meowth is also devastating since Coughing has decent defense and Smog, which can poison. I go back and heal for good measure, but it's still a huge problem. It's not even necessarily a lack of PP, it's just too little damage, even at level 22. I considered training, but it would take several minutes to even get one level here in Mount Moon. I'm so overleveled that the experience just isn't coming very quickly anymore. I get 9 resets against Team Rocket here and lose about 8 minutes of real time. That's really frustrating, but we finally get past and we can make it to Cerulean City. Here I'm at level 23 and I think I'm fully prepared for the rival, but in his battle I just get immediately demolished. This tells me that I just need more levels at this point and there's not a lot of trainers available. In my Omnite and Kabuto runs, I realize that I can blackout train using Misty's team. I do the same thing here, and so I can beat her Staryu and then get 
intentionally knocked out by Starmie. Not that I have to try that hard for that. I knew this would be a tough challenge for Caterpie, so today I'm actually using perfect DVs. These values are additional randomized amounts that are added to a Pokemon's base stats. They can go up to 15, which is what I'm using across the board today. This means that theoretically Caterpie should have the best possible stats in every category at the end of the game. At level 25 I try blue again, twice, and it's still not really close. I guess I need to go all the way up to level 28? This is the next point that I'll have good damage rounding, and I guess is the next target for training from here. I get tired of training around level 27, and I just go try blue again just to see, and I lose two more times. I have to take the walk of shame back to Misty and continue grinding for experience. At level 28 though, the rival is finally possible. There is still luck involved though, because Spearow can drop my stats, and Sand Attack can really mess me up but we can finally make it through and knock out Eevee. I'm really over leveled at this point. Being level 28 before the second gym is kind of crazy. Caterpie though is gonna need even more than that. At the end of Nugget Bridge, I can pick up Charmander and name it Sanjay. Thank you so much Sanjay for being subscribed. You're awesome. I have to fight a hiker here on Route 25 and it's pretty tough without struggle, but Caterpie does get the win. And then I beat most of the trainers here on Route 25 except the other two hikers. And that means that I'm now level 30 before leaving Cerulean City. I have to come back for Misty later. She's Probably still too strong for me to beat now. That means it's time to battle this rocket that has the dig TM, and his team can be a problem, specifically because of Drowsy. Hypnosis on Drowsy can get really scary, and it does here. Luckily, Caterpie wakes up and we can knock it out before it takes us down, but it could have taken the win if it kept using Confusion. But beating him opens up Vermilion City. And here I actually have to fight the trainers on Route 6. I never really have to fight these guys. It's not really great training experience, but Caterpie's gonna have to get as much as it can the whole game. I basically have to be overleveled at every single twist and turn in the game, so I just train as much as possible everywhere I go. I need at least level 35 for Misty, I think, and probably around 38 for Surge, so I'm just getting as much as I can. In fact, I clear every single trainer on the SSN. I do get KO'd by a gentleman that has two Growlithes. These are tough matchups for Caterpie, but they don't have good AI, so they don't know they should use Ember. And what's good is Roar does nothing in battle in Gen 1, so they can easily lose if they use the wrong moves. I do pick up some items for money, but I can't use any of the TMs like Body Slam or Rest, and that's really disappointing. However, today I'm not planning on buying vitamins. That may seem weird, but with all this training, I think I'm going to have enough stat experience that it's going to max out anyway. Plus, I need as much money as possible for healing items to avoid Poké Center trips to save time. Caterpie's going to need to heal a lot. After clearing all the fights, I finally take on the SSN rival and win pretty easily here. Probably because we're so significantly overleveled. And with that, the ship is finally cleared of every single thing it has to offer and it can sail away into the distance. That means we're finally done training here, right? No, not yet. I have to go east from Vermilion and keep going and training on all these trainers over here. That brings me to level 37 and I can finally go back to Cerulean and beat Misty. This may be the highest level I've ever been for this fight. And while Caterpie does it pretty well here, there is still chances for it to lose in this battle. Luckily, Starmie flounders and doesn't really know what to do and Caterpie can take the win. But that means Surge is immediately next, and I am still a little bit worried for him. His Raichu can hit really hard, and there's no way to know what it's going to do next. His battle is based entirely on luck. He needs to just use an X speed or miss his attacks a couple of times, and then Caterpie can make it work. Just please no Thunderbolt. But of course, luck is not on Caterpie's side all the time, and we get a couple of quick resets to big hits from Thunderbolt. But luckily, when he does miss a Mega Kick or use one of those pointless X speeds, then we can actually get the win, and that's what happens on the third try. That means we can pick up Squirtle and we can name it Chillit. Thank you so much Chillit for being subscribed. That's our subscribers for today, but if you want to see your name pop up in the videos in the future, of course, make sure to get subscribed. And like the video if you can right now. Thank you. That brings us to the journey to and through Rock Tunnel. Once again in all these areas I'm fighting every single trainer, and then I have to go sell everything that I have and buy as many super potions as I can take. And that will at least get me through the tunnel, but I'm going to need a lot more later. I need to be able to use up all of my PP so I can have struggle for the hikers here. These hikers are valuable experience I need for the mid game. I tried to skip them in the first run, but then I had to backtrack and then train on them anyway, so it was just a waste of time. I do get an unlucky reset on the very first fight because of confusion status, which doesn't bode very well. They are tough battles though, so I'm gonna probably have to heal after every single one. It's just struggle through the fight and then use a super potion, and then rinse and repeat the whole way through the tunnel. That is until the self-destructing hiker. This was a huge hurdle in my first attempt when I was only level 38 at this point, and this time Caterpie is level 42. I can use Struggle to knock out his whole team, but a badly timed self-destruct is really bad. As well as any hits from Rock Throw can really throw off this plan. Caterpie is a champ though and makes it through on the very first attempt. That felt like a huge relief. I then have to use an Aether so I stop struggling just to make the other trainers a little bit quicker. I do get paralyzed by a junior trainer that's using a wrapping Bellsprout and I thought it was over, 
but Caterpie gets incredibly lucky and actually gets to knock it out before it uses Rap again, and it makes it out of that battle. Caterpie is really putting in his best effort today. My timing of using the Aether was perfect because then I can actually run out of Tackle again by the end of the cave, which means I can fight the two hikers outside of the tunnel and get their experience as well. I never fight these trainers, and it's kind of weird to see their teams. I mean, it's just more Geodudes and Onyxes, but I kind of get to ignore them in most of my solo runs. From there, we can just pass right through Lavender Town and start heading to Celadon. Once again here, I can fight every single trainer. There's a lot here, actually. However, one super nerd does have a muck, and that's actually a concern for Caterpie. Poison types are also everywhere now, and that's really bad. Not only can they inflict the poison status, but they're also dealing super effective damage with moves like Smog and Sludge, which is actually hitting really hard. I do make it to the game corner, and I'm already level 45 against these rockets. Here though, there's really no reason to collect any items. I can't use any TMs, and I'm not planning on buying any vitamins, so it's just gonna be money for potions, I guess? I'm also not doing the Marowak skip today. I usually allow that, it doesn't feel like a game-breaking glitch, it just helps me skip a couple of really tedious battles in the mid-game here. But Caterpie needs all of that experience today. And Giovanni's team actually gives a lot of it, so I'm gonna go all the way through the storyline here. I do realize I'm gonna have to struggle to beat him though, because he has two rock types, Onyx and Rhyhorn, that have really good defense. So I leave real quick, stock up on potions, and get the beverage for the guard later. I also go and pick up Fly so I can fly back to Pewter and I can spam out all the string shot again. I'm gonna have to do this a lot for this run. I then head to the basement floor and accidentally walk right into Jesse and James, and I have low health. I haven't saved in a minute and I've beaten a lot of trainers, so I just have to take the blackout so I don't lose experience. I come back and take an easy win the second time, but then I realize my PP is all back. It was restored when I blacked out. So I have to fly to Pewter again, go get rid of it again, and then come back to fight Giovanni with only 24 tackles left. However, his rock Pokemon just take me out. I need to struggle instead. So I have to go out and train and use up the rest of tackle so I can go and try to struggle against him. This goes much better, and I can actually beat him. I'm only 20 levels over him, so I mean, that's not too bad. And this gives me the Sylph Scope. With that, I can head to the Pokemon Tower and actually reveal all the ghosts there. While I'm thinking about the next steps, I heal in Celadon and realize this was a mistake. I did want some tackle PP back for the rival, but I'm gonna have to struggle right after that. I go to fight him anyway, and at level 48, this battle is actually not entirely trivial. With enough sand attack luck, he could have actually won. And then we head back to Pewter again to go spam out PP in the forest. This is gonna be a trend, isn't it? Redacted PP joke here. And now in the Pokemon Tower, this is the point in the game where Caterpie should get softlocked. Tackle and Struggle are both normal type moves in Gen 1, so Caterpie can't deal any damage to Ghost Pokemon, so there's no way for it to continue at this point. However, changing Struggle to have the Gen 2 mechanics with the typeless damage fixes this. Caterpie is now able to pummel the ghosts by struggling, but on the fifth floor, I need to avoid the healing area. This would make the rest of the tower impossible. I can manipulate this channeler though to walk out of the way just enough and get around her on the other side of the healing spot. This way, Caterpie can continue using struggle to reach the top of the tower. And then we see Ghost Friend. Wait, it's a Marowak? This whole time? Caterpie has been betrayed. I have to knock it out. Oh, well, actually for the experience, not for the betrayal, but still. Now I can backtrack and use the heal point and then go fight Team Rocket to the top of the tower. However, this battle is also really tough. Despite being 22 levels higher than their Pokemon, Caterpie doesn't have an easy fight here. For the first run, I was stuck here for a long time. I had to leave and come back after training even more. Caterpie's tough though and only has one reset and then makes it through on a sliver of health. And then back to some more mid-game training. We get ahead south from Lavender Town and beat all of the trainers on Route 12 and 13. This is essential training both for Koga and for the Sylph Rival coming up. It actually can't reliably get past Rival Fival until level 70. After I beat all these trainers, I head back to Saffron and clear the Fighting Dojo as well. I do have trainers still on routes 14 and 15 closer to Fuchsia, but they're actually too far away for now, so I'm gonna train here first. The benefit of the Fighting Dojo is that they're all clustered together and they give good attack stat experience, which Caterpie really needs for this run. However, the leader here gets an early burn with his Hitmonchan in the first attempt with Fire Punch, which gives me one reset, but without the burn, it's really not a problem. He doesn't have good AI, so he doesn't know to use that every time. And now I think the quickest way to get to Fuchsia City is probably taking the bike route. I need to fight these trainers anyway, and the experience here is gonna be really nice. However, there are a couple of real poison type threats over here, especially when fighting so many trainers at the same time. I carefully work my way through all of these trainers, but then I get a reset on the last muck and the last trainer. I go ahead and black out here to keep the experience and then go back to get Caterpie's revenge. With the bike route cleared, I can now get to Fuchsia City and the Safari Zone. I can skip all the items in the Safari Zone and just pick up the gold teeth and surf. I don't need anything else. After digging out, I'm right next to the gym and I figure I could just try training here to avoid backtracking. I get KO'd by a Hypno, so I decide to come back later. It's a little too tough for now. 
Instead, I can head out east to go to routes 15 and 14 to keep the grind going. I beat every single trainer here again. I'm still not ready for Koga or Rival though, so I need a new place to train even more. Cue the Sylph building. I go to floor number 5 first so I can get the card key so I can get in every single room along the way. And while I'm here, I go ahead and defeat all the trainers on the 5th floor. Then, starting on the 2nd floor, I clear every rocket on every floor, including the scientists, in the entire building. I even get to the very top and beat the one trainer on the 11th floor. Caterpie is now level 64 and has put in over 3 hours of real time into the game, but I'm not even ready to face the rival here yet. So I can go to Celadon City first to go fight Erica. At this point, I'm actually running out of places to get experience. Luckily there's some trainers here that are clustered close together. And then I face Erica at literally double her level, and it's an easy fight. It would be even easier if I had a bug type move, because they'd be quad effective here. But Tackle does the job. Her poison moves actually would have made her very dangerous earlier on, but it's nice to have an easy gem now. And now the only remaining place with good experience yield is Koga's gym. I can now beat the jugglers here, but the poison types can still be a problem. The ironic thing though is that I do need to get poison before I fight Koga. In his battle, Koga will actually prioritize using Toxic. So going in already poisoned is actually better than getting hit by Toxic because I'm going to last longer in the battle. In his battle as well is where Caterpie gets its first extra handicap that no other Pokemon have been given for my yellow solo runs. I am allowing Caterpie to use only X attacks in battle. No healing. No restoring PP, no other X items, only X attacks. Even with that caveat, Koga is still tricky. I can have my special dropped with Psychic on the first Venonat, I can get confused with Supersonic, I can also just take too much damage with Poison Ticks and his special moves. After 5 losses, I can finally get the luck I need and the Venomoth chooses Leech Life at the end of the battle instead of Psychic. I can knock it out and get his badge and get the speed boost, and that's really really nice for the rival. Also while I'm here in Fuchsia, I pick up Strength and the Rare Candy in the Warden's House. The Rare Candies are going to be essential. However, even now I'm still not level 70. So what I do is I go south from Fuchsia to clear all the swimmers here on Route 20. I then fly to Pallet and clear all the remaining trainers up to Cinnabar on the ocean in between there and the Seafoam Islands. And now at level 71 it's finally time to face the Sylph Rival. Now again I am allowing X attacks in rival battles and gym battles, not for training though, only for those major battles. This will at least make the challenge possible. It's a really tough one, I mean maybe at level 100 it was still technically possible, but it would be really an uphill battle at that point. And I'm not trying to drive myself crazy over here, this is already crazy enough. And similar to Koga, this battle is still a little tricky, even with the X attacks. The Sand Slash will always go for Poison Sting, and then it can get me poisoned, which means that setting up X attacks can actually get a little risky. And his team can even paralyze or burn, even if the Sand Slash doesn't inflict a status. Vaporeon can also set up Sand Attacks at the end of the battle, making Caterpie inconsistent, which costs the fight. I get two resets here before I can get the setup and the luck I need to avoid the pitfalls. That does feel really good to get past the rival, and Jesse and James here are much easier than before, so no issues. However, because of the last Giovanni battle, I know that using Struggle against him is better because of his Rhyhorn. So again, I go back to the Viridian Forest and get rid of my String Shot PP. Then I go and train a bit in the mansion to use up Tackle and get a bit of experience, and then I realize while I'm here, I might as well just complete the mansion anyway. So I clear all the trainers and pick up the rare candies in the key to Blaine's gym. Now with all of my PP used up, it's time for Giovanni and Sylph. Nidorino isn't an issue, and Persian's Growl is really bad news if it hits, but I can take out Rhyhorn with Struggle, and that leaves only Nidoqueen left, but it can paralyze with Body Slam. This makes it really close, but Caterpie takes a first try win. And this is perfect, because since I'm already struggling, it's a good time to go clear the trainers in Sabrina's gym. The Psychic Pokemon mostly have low defense and HP, so they don't deal a lot of damage back to me and recoil, but also there are Chandlers in this gym with Ghost Pokemon, which is why Struggle was required. I will however save Sabrina until after Blaine. She doesn't give a badge boost or any real reason to fight her now, but Blaine does give me the special boost, which will help for her later. I go back to the mansion to finish leveling to level 74 before beating all of the Cinnabar gym trainers. I thought this would get me to level 75, but it was a little short. I have to go back to the mansion again just to level up all the way to 75 because that's what I was aiming for for Blaine's fight. I mean it's good for damage rounding, but more importantly, it's important to keep those badge boosts for the whole fight. If I level up in the middle of the fight, it will actually recalculate the badge boosts and take those stats away from me. Because I know that Blaine is going to be the hardest gym leader in the entire game. Fire Spin on his Rapidash and Ninetales' as Flamethrower are both terrifying. Even if I can get past them, Arcanine has Fire Blast, which easily takes me down. Using X attacks does give me extra badge boosts in speed and defense, and Tail Whip from Ninetales actually does give me an attack stack too. However, I need Ninetales to only use Quick Attack or Tail Whip, or else I will likely lose. Boosted Attack is very dangerous if it hits me with Confuse Ray. That means getting the setup is very unlikely. I get taken out a lot by Flamethrower. And even if I can get to Arcanine, it can wipe me out in a single hit. 
After eight resets, I consider going back to train up to level 78 in the mansion, but I see that I need over 16,000 experience for a single level at this point. It's going to take forever to get one. Because of that, I just return to Blaine and just keep resetting here over and over again. I realize that I should be taking his experience and blacking out though, instead of just hard resetting the game. And while I do use blackout training when necessary, like earlier with Misty, I do not allow myself to use it for free in the battle I'm trying to beat. For example, earlier when I was trying to beat Rival 2, I allowed myself to blackout train using Misty, because I was intentionally losing to her so I can beat the rival. But here at Blaine, I really do want to win this, and it could technically happen at any point if I got lucky, so I will count these as losses and resets for Caterpie, because it is trying to win here. And it takes me 38 resets until I'm able to get the setup. I knock out Ninetales and Rapidash pretty easily. I get to Arcanine with only 60 HP left though, and it misses Fire Blast. I hit it again, and it sets up Reflect instead of attacking, but it has very low health, so Caterpie tackles one more time, and I can finally take it down and beat Blaine. I now have six badges, and Caterpie is up to level 77, but low on items. I need to go sell my TMs and everything I have to stock up for the tough battles coming up next. But Sabrina is not one of those hard battles. While I could take a lot of damage from Psychic, she's not guaranteed to use it, and I outspeed Abra so I avoid the Flash. Caterpie actually does decent damage to Kadabra and Alakazam. In fact, Alakazam just hits a Psy Wave and then recovers, giving Caterpie a free win. Giovanni is the last gym leader standing, and I need to prepare in a very specific way for him. First, I do beat every trainer here in his gym as well. I then leave the gym and go to the forest to get rid of String Shot again. However, I do not completely want to use up all of my PP. I use an Aether, in fact, to get a few points of tackle back, and then immediately use them up again. This is because I need exactly six tackles for this fight. Now at level 78, I'm ready for this intense battle against the final gym leader. I need to set up all six X attacks right away against Doug Trio. This will make both it and Persian one hits. The Needles will still take two hits from tackle, but they can't deal much damage. Thunder is a little scary though, since it could paralyze and that would be a real problem. This setup will mean that I use my last tackle on Needle King, and then I can use Struggle for Rhydon. However, Rhydon can easily KO me with a good Rock Slide. Plus, if I get hit by even one Sand Attack by Doug Trio at the beginning of the fight, it really messes Caterpie up and I can't get through his team. I try a few times and reset immediately when I get hit by this move. On my fifth attempt, Caterpie makes it to Rhydon and survives the Rock Slide. Struggle does just enough to knock out this Rock Monster, and that means Caterpie has now beaten all eight gyms. But the last six battles may be the worst yet. It's now out of the frying pan and into the fire. The final rival fight on Route 22 has a similar problem as the Sylph encounter. I can get poisoned when setting up with Sand Slash. Even if I don't, XU can inflict the status as well. When I finally can get to Vaporeon, it will just spam Acid Armor, which seems good. It just sees the typing and thinks this is super effective. However, if I am poisoned, it can actually make me lose because it's going to stall me out. I can finally make it through with high enough health though to the Vaporeon and survive the stall fest, and then I can beat the rival. And that means I can now challenge the Elite Four. Well, not yet. I still need to keep training, obviously. I'm not done yet. I have to fight all of the optional trainers in Victory Road. And sadly, at this level, it is not free experience. Even at level 79, I can be taken down by a level 42 Charmeleon. That's not what you want to see. But Caterpie trains up and makes it all the way to Indigo Plateau without any other resets. And now I have to prepare for the League. And here again, I have another plan I need to follow. First, I need to get rid of all of my String Shot PP again. Then I can go to the power plant to pick up the last rare candy and use some of Caterpie's tackles by training here. That gets me to level 82 and I return to Viridian to knock out weak Pokemon so I don't waste experience because I don't want to level up in the middle of the battle. Plus it's faster too. Then when Caterpie is down to about 10 PP left in tackle, it's ready for Lorelei. I do use three rare candies before her for good measure now. I'm going to start using these since I'm basically defeated everything in the game at this point except for wild Pokemon. And now the battle against Lorelei begins. And Caterpie is very lucky that Dugong gives an easy way to set up with X attack when it's using rest. On this first attempt, I take way too much damage though and get confused by Lapras. And confusion, of course, is really bad with a boosted attack. And Caterpie knocks itself out. When I go back in, I get frozen by Jinx on the next attempt, which just feels bad. With no way to thaw out, I just have to reset and maybe third time's the charm because I do get to Lapras and it misses Blizzard and Caterpie defeats the first member of the Elite Four. Next up though after that is the Hiker. And Bruno is actually the first reason that Caterpie needed struggle here. Onyx would take way too long with tackle. The fighting types aren't an issue, but the rock slide from Onyx is a real threat. Because I'm using struggle, I have to be careful to keep my HP up. After three resets to Bruno, I decided to go ahead and use all but one of my rare candies. Sadly, it seemed necessary here against him. 
It does make the fight a little easier, but it's still not perfect. I take another three resets until I get the luck I need and have decent health for the Machamp. At that point, it can't do much and I can just knock it out with struggle. And now the next Ghost Trainer scares me. Agatha is going to require struggle through the entire battle. Like Blaine's Ninetales and Lorelei's Lapras, her team has Confuse Ray, which is really bad, but all of my training and preparation was for this battle specifically. By an incredible stroke of luck, I don't get confused or paralyzed on the Gengar while I set up. And once I get past the first Gengar, Caterpie can quickly sweep the rest of her team with all that attack. And I actually don't get a single reset on this Ghost Master. I mean, I only have 90 resets, it's actually not too bad for Caterpie. But that means I'm in new territory now. I have not gotten to Lance at this level before in my other playthrough. I know that Aerodactyl could be a threat. I use a max Aether and save. I now have Tackle, but was that a bad decision? Was Struggle better? I think his team has too much HP, honestly, and struggling would probably be a bad idea. I do have to set up X attacks on Gyarados, and it can do a ton of damage. Luckily, I do get badge boosts every time I use one, but it can also use Leer to draw my defense. Having my defense dropped is really bad when I get to Aerodactyl because it deals super effective damage. I can't set up on the Dragonairs either because they can inflict Paralysis and Freeze. So what I need is to be around half health after fully setting up on Gyarados, then take out the Dragonairs. With no defense drops, Caterpie can survive a couple of hits from Aerodactyl. However, Lance's Dragonite has Fire Blast. So the only way for Caterpie to beat Lance is, I have to set up 6 X attacks and not get hit by Leer or take too much damage from Gyarados. I then have to survive Aerodactyl's wing attack or fly and knock it out. And if I get there, I just have to pray that Fire Blast misses one time. But this takes way too long to happen. I guess Caterpie's luck has finally run out. I have 54 resets just on Lance. It is a rough battle. But finally, I get the Fire Blast miss and we can knock out Dragonite. And now I use my last rare candy and it's finally time for the last battle in the entire game, the champion. At level 95, Caterpie is nearly as strong as it can possibly get. The strategy for the champ is similar to before. I need to set up X attacks on Sand Slash and not get poisoned. After setup, I can one hit the Alkazam and then the Executor is not a problem. I can actually KO the Ninetales as well, which surprised me. Magneton then could be the problem because it will survive, but it doesn't paralyze Caterpie. I can knock it out after it tries a Swift. That gets us to Vaporeon without any statuses, as long as it doesn't hit Hydro Pump and it goes for Mist. That does it. Caterpie knocks out Vaporeon and finishes Yellow version with a time of 5 hours, 22 minutes, and 48 seconds of real time, and 16 hours and 38 minutes of game time, with a total of 145 resets, Caterpie has beat the game. I did take more than an hour off the first attempt, which I only completed by using healing items for Lance and the champion just to get a baseline, and that was still 6 hours and 24 minutes, and 18 hours and 47 minutes of game time, and with 191 resets. So it's a huge improvement over the first run, and I think Caterpie can even do better, but that's all I have in me for now. This was a tough one, but maybe it could return for a race against Weedle in the future? But that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching, and if you haven't, make sure to like the video and subscribe, and until next time, have a wonderful day.